when you train a paralyzed person who is on artificial respiration, artificial feeding, completely paralyzed, and only the eyes move a little bit, and they can say yes or no, you can train them with a brain-computer interface, with a spelling brain-computer interface, to use their brain activity to select letters and to communicate. And that's very nice. People love it. They do it, these paralyzed people. Now the but comes. But if a person is long-term paralyzed, the eyes do not move anymore, and the eyes and the sphincter are the two last muscles who go away when you have a neurological paralyzing disease. If these both go away, then you lose all the possibilities of motor communication, all of them. And that means then you are really locked in, and we call that state completely locked in state. A locked in state means that you still have one muscle somewhere in the body which you can move. L everything works with locked in patients, but nothing works with the completely locked in patient. And what's happening probably is when you're long term paralyzed, you imagine that you think, I want to see my mom. Okay, you can think this, but she's not coming. She's coming later. Or you say, my back hurts, somebody should turn me around. Well, you can think it, but nobody comes. Or you think, hmm, I have saliva in my lungs here, somebody has to suck it out. And nobody comes and sucks it out. A little bit later, somebody sucks it out. So what, what does that mean in terms of psychology? Our old friend and father of psychology, Ivan Pavlov, called it extinction. So. What's happening is when you're in that state, over the months, you extinguish all thinking which is output oriented, which is volitionally oriented. You eliminate in your thoughts all your intentions. You see everything or you hear everything, you can fantasize, you can think, logical thinking, but you will eliminate the category of voluntary learning out of your brain, which is very useful because it's a evolutionary useful that some things I cannot do, I'm not thinking about them, otherwise I get desperate. And our patients are not depressed, and that's one of the reasons why they are not depressed. They feel good, they have high quality of life, despite the fact that they have a terrible disease. And I think that's the mechanism which keeps them alive.